Since I first tested Dynamance Rexy out a few months ago, I've been looking into how viable it would be to combine this with ACF Frontend Forms Pro to create a sort of simplified block builder on the front end of the site and then let clients and users have access to those to build up more feature rich designs without any form of admin access. Now, thanks to the hard work of both Roloff and Shabti and their teams, this has become a viable option. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to achieve that vision for yourself. Before I do though, let me just preface this with two things. One, this is not a beginner's tutorial. If you're not used to working with the likes of WordPress, custom fields and dynamic data, you really should get familiar with those tools first. Secondly, this is not a full on deep dive tutorial. I'm assuming an awful lot of prior knowledge knowledge that I've covered many times in other videos on building front-end dashboards for WordPress. And I've linked some of those in the description below so you can check out those videos before you start working and following through this particular tutorial. Now, with all those points cleared up, let's hop onto the computer and I'll show you what I'll be creating in today's tutorial. So there are currently two different sides to this tutorial. We've got the front end dashboard facility, which is what you can see at the moment. And then we've got the actual designs that we're going to use. So what I want to do first of all, is just quickly show you what the dashboard does. And then I'll show you how that's reflected on the front end. So this is the dashboard design is basic. You could go anywhere you want with this. You use an Elementor so you can get as creative as you want. We have some options like your dashboard home, which will list all of the posts associated with your particular account. You can add new posts inside you. You can edit posts and you could, if you want to set up like an edit profile, for example, when we come in and take a look at one of the posts, so we can choose this one, for example, and edit it. We'll hop over into what you've probably seen many times in the past with any of my front end tutorials, your title, your content, your featured image, and so on. Those normal things you have as part of WordPress and a typical post. And then we may have some custom post sections. In this example, we're using flexible content and what the flexible content allows us to do is put in various different types of content and we can create the template for these contents, how they're going to look on the front end. And then we can let users basically choose what they want from a list of custom blocks. They can reorder them. They can add content in there and you can really get super creative with this. So for example, if we open up the title section, which is one of the flexible blocks, we open that up. It's a really simple block. It has a title, which we can use in various different parts of our page. If we go to the description, for example, which in this case is a gallery description, this is now a little bit more feature rich. We've got a WYSIWYG editor, at which point you could also have file uploads and things like that if you wanted to. We then have a gallery, which is an ACF custom field. And you can see we've got all the gallery features inside there. But what we also have are things like this basic content block. And this is a block content as opposed to a single feature. If I expand that out, you can see this has a title for this section, a featured image for this section, content, which again, we can use that WYSIWYG editor. We also have things like background colors. Now, currently, the way this works, the color even though we can set it dynamically, we can't reference that just yet inside Elementor itself. So while this is in there and I can show you how to insert this, we can't currently link that between two of the plugins, but I have been reassured this is something that's come in hopefully not too long, maybe even at the time this video is released, but that feature should hopefully open up even more creative possibilities. We've then got a button. The nice thing with this is I've also set up conditional logic. So if you don't put any text in there, the button doesn't show inside this custom block. If you do, then you have the button text. And when you put a URL in there, so we'll just type anything in, you can see we also get a button color. And again, this is using some conditional logic. And when we have that ability to be able to link these colors, we can then let the, the user, the person that's actually creating the content, get really, really creative. And you can create as comprehensive feature blocks as you want to. So that's the kind of thing we have. We can also just move these around. So for example, we may want to say, I want this basic content block above everything else. I can just drag it to the top. Now that's become the first item. If I want to, I can delete it. I can clone it. I can do lots of different things. So what we're really doing is we're building a quite simplistic, but also potentially really flexible front end way of allowing people to build up custom blocks for the designs inside their pages or posts without giving them access to the back end dashboard of WordPress. Lots and lots of really useful power inside this kind of technique. Now let's take a look at what happens on the front end of the site when this custom content, this flexible content has been used to populate parts of a typical WordPress post. So if we take a look, this is a template that we have set up using the normal WordPress featured image title, all the meta fields. Then we've got our content, but underneath that, we've now got our custom flexible fields. So there's our title, 
which has been set up with styling inside Elemental. We've got the description. We've got our gallery, which works in the same way you expect any kind of gallery to work inside Elemental. We come down, we've got another gallery description. We have our custom block. So this is the block. If we come back over into here, this is our sort of building block. As you can see, there's the featured image, there's the content, there's the button text and so on. And we come back over here, you can see currently there's no button displaying. But if we drop a link inside there, and we'll just put in something like this, you can see, and we'll drop in a button text, my website. So now if we save this, just save our page as normal. So we'll just come down to the bottom and we'll just update this. We'll hop back over onto that front page and refresh that. And if this is the right post, you can see there's our button with our link and everything is set up, including the link to take us off to another site. So if we don't include any content, the button doesn't show up. If we do, the button shows up. So you can get creative, adding extra fields and features in that are then dynamically controlled. If there's no content, you don't show them on the front end inside your template files. If there are, you do. So you could get really creative with how this all works. That's the basics of what I want to show you how to build today. But like I say, you can go so far with the techniques that we're gonna cover in this video. Now the key to getting this all working are a couple of plugins. They are paid for plugins, so let's get that right out of the way, right at the beginning. However, they're not particularly expensive, and if you want something like this, especially if you're working with clients, this is going to be money well spent. So you can see the first one is called Dynamance Rexy, and this is what creates the link between our ACF and our front end and the flexible fields and so on, and the way we can in integrate those into our designs. So this is kind of that link between everything. We're also gonna be using the, my old friend, the ACF Front End Forms Pro. This is what gives us the easy ability to create front end forms and link everything up through these flexible form fields. So using these two in conjunction with each other, you have a pretty powerful setup. We also have some more plugins. I'm gonna quickly go through these and links to all of these will be in the description. Some of them are affiliate links, some of them are not. You can choose to use those if you wanna support the channel or just go direct to the website and buy them yourself if you prefer, no hard feelings. Okay, so ACF Front End Forms Pro, we've just seen that. We're also gonna be using ACF or Advanced Custom Fields Pro. You have to have Pro because Pro gives you access to the flexible content field type. If you don't have Pro, you can't follow along with this, unfortunately. So you're gonna to need to have that installed. We're using then Advanced Post Queries, which is from the same developer as ACF Front End Forms Pro. This is totally free plugin and worth getting, even if you're not following along with this kind of tutorial. It gives you so many more options when you want to control different queries to do with users that are logged in and those kinds of things. Check it out, link in the description. Dynamic Conditions, again, another free plugin that opens up some useful possibilities when you want to dynamically show or hide content on the front end of your site. Dynamics Rexy, we've just seen. Elemental or LE custom skin, because this allows us to create those custom loops. But there are other plugins that allow you to do that as well. I just like LE custom skin. And we're using Elemental and Elemental Pro. Pro because we need to have access to the various different sort of theme files and so on that we need to use in this. So that's the key tools that we're going to be using to create this front end dashboard and this sort of block builder feature. Now that we've seen what we'll be building and what tools we need, let's get started by setting up ACF and our flexible content fields. Let's go into custom fields and let's add our new field group. We're just gonna call this flexible fields just so we know exactly what is going to be included. Okay. We're gonna set this to be post type equal to post, that's perfectly fine, but if you create custom post types, you can easily use ACF to link up to those, up to you how you want to organize things. That will work whichever way you go about doing things. Okay, so once you've done that, we now need to create our first field. So let's say add our field. We're just gonna give this a name. We're gonna call this Flexi Content. Let it prefer the field name, and we're gonna change the field type to be flexible. So we're gonna scroll down until we find that option for flexible content. Like I say, this is a pro only feature, so you're gonna to need to make sure that's installed. Okay, now, so we've got this all set up. It's up to us now if we want to make this a required field. You can do if you want to, but I would generally say, unless you only have flexible fields inside the post type, then I would leave that unchecked. Show only on the front end, we don't wanna do that unless again, like you say, you don't want people to access the dashboard of WordPress or you don't want admins to be able to change content, then I would leave that unchecked as well. But the options there, should you want to use it. Okay, so now we have the layout. Now this is basically one of our flexible fields. So let's just keep this really simple to start off with. And we're just gonna call this gallery 
title because we're going to kind of have a little bit of a gallery set up we'll have a title a description and you'll have a gallery of images now you could make this into one big block i just want to show you how we can set things up in various different ways then you can go however you want to with it so we're just going to leave that set to gallery title we're going to leave the, the layout set to block but you can choose between table and row and it's just different ways this is going to be displayed in the dashboard you don't have to worry too much experiment with it if you want to see how these things all work Next up, we're just going to give this the actual physical meta field content because this is kind of your grouping and this is where the field that you'll see and interact with will be listed. So we're going to add one single field inside there and we're just going to call this title. Field name, that's perfectly fine. Leave that set as text and you can see we've got some extra options. You can set this to required and all those kinds of things. And if you disable the normal WordPress post features, your title, your content, your featured image, and so on, when we have ACF Frontend Forms Pro installed, you can then set this custom field to be any of those. So your title, your tagline, your post title, those kinds of things. So you could totally customize this, totally separate to the normal built-in WordPress features. Really cool to see that option inside there. We're going to leave that as it is. That's perfectly fine for this first one. And that's our first flexible content block created. Now this is where things differ a little bit to what you may be used to when working with ACF. We have no option now to add another one of these in if we don't hover over this layout. You can see if we do, we get these four new options. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say we want to create a new one. So you're gonna add a new one and you see that opens up another selection, another flexi box as it were, where we can now create another option. So this time we're gonna call this gallery description. Like I said, you can name these however you want, as long as they make sense. And we'll leave that as block. And this time, we're just going to come in to add a field. We're Again, we're going to call this gallery description. And we'll leave the field name. That's perfectly fine. We're going to change the field type, though, this time. And we're going to set this to be a WYSIWYG editor. When we do that, we can now configure how this WYSIWYG editor is going to work. We can have visual and text if you want to give people the ability to drop in their own short codes and codes and stuff like that. You can do that or you can choose between visual and text only. I'm gonna keep this so it's visual only. I wanna restrict what people could actually do. Toolbar, you can set between full and basic. If you just want people to have really simplistic options, set it to basic, or if you want them to have full control, you can set it to full. Let's just set this to basic because it's only a description. Do you want to allow them to upload media as part of their copy of the front-end dashboard? In other words, do they have access to uploading images and files inside this particular media or this particular text area i'm going to say no i don't in this example but you can do if you want to then you can delay initialization of tiny mce which is just basically the, the sort of like the content editor you're going to use and if you do that that just basically means that someone has to sort of click to enable that function this can help speed up the front end dashboard if you find it's a little slow loading for any reason if you want to you can enable that Again, we have that feature for setting as post content. If you wanted to use this in that way, you could do that and replace the normal WordPress content fields. Other than that, though, we're going to leave that as it is. And we're going to say, I'm going to close that up. We're going to add another new one in. And this time it's going to be our gallery. So same thing again, add in another field. This time we're going to set this to be gallery field name gallery, and we're going to just choose this to be a gallery field type. This allows us to upload multiple files if we want to. And once you've done that, now you've got some options to set up inside you to make sure that everything works the way that we need it to. Want to add instructions in? You can do that. Show it only on the front end. All those options are still available. What is important, though, is this return format. We need to make sure that it uses the image array in this example, and that's going to allow us to use the, the gallery on the front end when we're setting up the templates with Elementor. So set that to image array. The preview size is just what you're going to see for the preview inside the front end dashboard. You can set that to medium for speed of loading, and I would say that's probably the best way to do it. You can then set up how you want the library to work. You can say, do you want to give this access to all? In other words, it goes into the media library and anybody can access this content. Or do you want to upload the images in this gallery only to the posts? You associate it with the post. This can be really useful. For this example, I'm not going to do it just because for speed of demonstration, I'm going to leave it set to all. But I would generally recommend uploading to post is better because it means that when the post is deleted, all the media files should also go with it which is just super handy. Then you've got minimum selection, maximum selection. In other words, what's the minimum amount of images you want to allow in the gallery and what's the maximum allowed? So you could set this value inside there if you wanted to, or you could leave it as you want. 
One thing I would suggest you do is set up the allowed file types. And all you need to do is just literally put in the file types you want to allow people to upload, separate them by commas, and any file that falls outside of that will not be allowed to be uploaded. It's a good way of adding just that extra little bit of security to make sure everything is safe and sound. Okay, so that's the gallery side of things set up and we've got our first three flexi fields, the gallery title, the gallery description and the gallery where the images are going to actually display. Now this is a good starting point and gives you some basic understanding of how these work, but the real power of this comes in when you create more complex flexible blocks. So let's add another block in, add new, same again, we're just going to give this a name of content block and we're going to start adding fields in now we're going to add more than one field inside here because we can just stack these up in the same way you create custom meta field groups anyway so let's just start off by just giving this a title and a title for the field name is fine text is perfectly fine we're going to leave all those values as they are we'll just shrink that down and we're going to add another field in and this time we're going to give this the ability to add the content so we're just going to call this content I'm going to set this to be a, let's just scroll that up so you can see what I'm doing. Let's set this to be a WYSIWYG editor. And we're going to just make sure that this is configured the way you want. So again, we're going to set this to visual only. We'll set this to full because you may want to have more control over the actual content that's going to be displayed. So that's going to be quite useful. And we'll leave everything as it is on there. We'll just shrink that down. We're going to add another one in now, which is going to be our featured image. And our featured image is kind of going to sit in the background of this particular block layout. But like I say, you can get creative and use whatever fields that you want. So we'll just drop in the featured image. And we're going to set that to be a media file. So we're going to say we want this to be image. And everything else looks good inside there. What we're going to do though is we need to change this this time from image array to image URL because there's only going to be one image in this example, not multiple images. You can leave the preview size if you want to. It's on your preview inside the editor itself. And again, I would generally recommend to upload to the post. But like I say, for this tutorial, I'm just going to leave it to all for simplicity. File types that are allowed, you can do the same thing again. So I'm simply just going to copy that and drop that inside there. And we're going to change the button text. We're going to say, do something a bit more in keeping. So we're going to say add featured or block featured image. You can see we've got some extra options inside here, which are quite useful. And in the right circumstances, we might want to use them. For now, we're going to leave those as they are. Okay, we're going to add another field in. And this time, we're just going to create this. And we're going to create a button. So we're going to say this is going to be the button. That's perfectly fine. Uh, text is fine. So we're just going to leave that as it is. And then we're going to add in another option, which is going to be the button URL. So, and this is where we're going to use some but, uh, conditional logic. So text is perfectly fine for that as well. Now, we only want this to show up, this box to show up, if someone starts typing in button text. Because without button text, it's going to be a blank button and look a bit odd. So what we're going to do is we're going to just scroll down and we're going to say that this has some conditional logic. So it says show field if, you can see conditional, or say flexi content, and you can see all the options inside there. We're going to say button text has any value. In other words, if button text has something in it, show this. Otherwise, just hide it, keep it out of sight. And we're going to leave it there. Once we've done that, we're going to come down and we're going to just set up any other options we want to do with how this all works. The only thing I want to do is change this button label to say add custom block. You can choose minimum and maximum layouts if you want to make sure that people don't go crazy with this and start adding 50, 60, 100 different layout items onto a page or post. You can set the minimum and maximum inside there. So pretty cool to see that. So other than that, everything else is now in place. So we'll hit publish on there. And that's our flexi content block all set up inside ACF. So now we've set things up. Let's just check everything is working. So let's hop over to our post section. We're going to come into all posts. We'll have a sample one inside you. And let's just edit this. And we should find down the bottom of our page, you can see there's our flexi content. So now we can say add a custom block. And we can say let's add our content block in. And there's our content block with our title our content, our featured image, and our button text. And if we type something into the button text, there's our button URL showing up. So everything is working the way we needed to. So that's that side of things all done and complete. Now that we have the flexible content meta fields built, we need to start by building the template files for each of our flexible field types. So let's do that now. Building our templates is really, really simple and straightforward. We're just going to be using the section for this. So we're going to create a new section template going to add a new section and you can see section select the location and we'll leave that as it is we don't need to worry about that right now we're going to give this a name now i'm going to proceed everything that i do to do with flexible content with the term flexible 
and then we're just going to give it a name afterwards. I'm going to quickly copy that from there just so it makes my life just a little bit easier. And we're just going to give this gallery title. Create our template. Now, this is going to work in exactly the same way as any other template for a section or a post or a page that you use inside Elementor itself. I'm going to close this down. You can ignore all the other aspects of this because they're all going to be ignored being part of a template. So we're going to drag and drop the header inside here. So the first thing we need to do now is just link this up to the right content. And this is where the link between Dynamics, Dynamance, Rexy and these templates and everything come into play. So we're going to just choose the dynamic tags as we always would. We're going to scroll down and you can see we have a new section now called Dynamance. And inside there, depending upon the kind of widget you insert, will give you various different options. This example, we want the Dynamance text. I'm going to select that, click on the little wrench icon and choose the field we want, which in this example is going to be the title for the gallery title. You see things are organized because the gallery title and then we've got our content block. And inside there, we've got the title, button text, and so on. So things are still organized in normal fashion when you're working with templates and dynamic tags and so on inside Elementor. Choose the title, and nothing will show up because obviously we haven't set anything to even use this yet. So how do you deal with that? Well, at this point, you kind of don't. You just have to kind of go with it at the moment. So if you want to apply styling and so on, you can do that. But obviously, you can't really see what's going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to publish this. And once we've done that, we're going to refresh the page. And generally, that will allow this sort of placeholder to show up. And there you can go. You can see now it says Dynamance Text Title. A little bit finicky and a little bit frustrating. But hopefully, this is something that will be ironed out that this will actually show. So I don't know if this is a Dynamance Rexy issue, whether it's an Elementor issue or something else. But that's one little thing that I'd like to see ironed out. But what you can do now is you can style this as you normally would. So we'll just simply select it and we'll just apply some styling. Now, you can apply global styling to all of this. You know the routine. We've covered this many, many times in various different tutorials, but we're just going to set this on this particular level just for ease at the moment. But, you know, style it and design it how you want to set things up. I'm going to set this to be something like, let's go for 24 and weight 600. Set this to transform to be uppercase and we'll leave it like that. We'll update that. So not perfect. And like I say, we refresh this, we should then see the changes. And like I say, I wish I knew where the problem was coming in with this, but it's there. So one other thing we're going to do, we're just going to drag and drop a little divider under there. And we'll just quickly style that, we'll set that to be something like 10% or 15%. Adjust our gap, change our color, set that a bit lighter. And we'll set that to be two pixels in. And just go into the margins and we'll just reduce that a little bit, say minus 10. There we go. So that's the template that's going to be used now for our gallery title. So we can just do the same thing again now. So we can hop back out of this and we're just going to come back to our save templates and we're going to add a new template and then we're going to create another new one. So we're just going to select this to be a section. We'll drop that down inside there. And this time we're going to call this gallery description, save our template or create our template. And then we can go and do pretty much exactly the same thing again. Let's close this down and let's do the same thing. This time we're going to choose the text editor because we're going to just have this as the description. Same dynamic tags, scroll right the way down, Dynamance WYSIWYG, and click on the little wrench icon and set what field we want, which is gallery description. If you want to put a fallback in, you can do that. You can set your styling up. So I'm going to quickly just apply some basic styling to this. We're going to set this to like 14 pixels. Set that to 300, that's perfectly fine. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. We'll publish that particular template, and now we can move on to the next one. And you can see it does show up eventually. Exit to our dashboard, and we're going to do this two more times. I'm not going to show you the gallery one because I think you're probably used to dealing with these kind of dynamic things, but I do want to show you how we do it with the block that we've created, which is a little bit more custom, a little bit more involved. So let's just add a new template in. Gonna set this to be a section and we're just going to call this custom block and let me just put the little prefix before that just so i know exactly what's going on okay we'll create our template so now we can create that slightly more comprehensive design layout so let's start off by closing this down and we're just going to put in a new two column section so we'll add that inside there we'll select it and we'll just do any kind of settings that we want like position of different things and stuff like that so you can say you want to leave the column gaps the height and all those kinds of things and you can set anything you want up inside you the size the width all those kinds of things 
But let's select this right hand column, which is going to show the actual content we want to work with. So once we select that, then we can just do things like set the background colors and all those kinds of good things. So let's come over to our style settings. Let's choose a background type. Let's just simply come in to pick a color. We're going to find this kind of dark blue kind of color. Doesn't really matter too much for this example. And we'll set that inside there. We'll just apply some padding and so on to this. So we're going to just put 50 pixels of padding around there. You can set your alignments and all those kinds of things. I'm sure you can kind of deal with all these things yourselves. I'm sure you're more than comfortable doing that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to drop a heading inside there. And you can see there's our header section. Let's set that something like H3, H4, because it obviously isn't as important. And we're going to set this to be dynamic content. So we'll first of all style it, because I think it's a little easier if we style it right now. Let's just set this to be white. Our typography, robot is perfectly fine. We'll set that to be, I don't know, say 20. And we'll set this to be about 400, maybe 500. So there's our title. Next thing we want to do is drop in the content and obviously link this up before we do. So let's just jump back onto our content, click on our dynamic tags, scroll down until we get to Dynamance text, select that, click the wrench, and select the title from our content block, which is our more comprehensive block. So that's that first section inserted into there. Next thing we're going to do is the same as we've done before. We're going to drag this text editor, drop that underneath there, select our dynamic link, scroll down to Dynamics Rexy. This time choose the WYSIWYG option. And again, choose the little wrench icon and choose the content from the content block. Jump over to our style section. And what we're going to do inside there is just set this to be white and we'll just adjust the opacity a little bit and we'll adjust the size on that as well. So we'll say that's going to be 14. There we go. Now, so that's really easy. There's nothing comprehensive, complex, diff difficult about any of that. Next up, we're going to add a little bit of logic in though. So now what we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop a button in, but we're going to know, know that this might not actually be populated. There might be nothing at all in this button. So we need to set up conditions on there and so on. So first of all, let's set up the text and the link. So dynamic tags for the text. Scroll down to our Dynamics Rexy and we're going to just choose text and we're going to expand that out and we're just going to choose button text. So there's our text. The next thing we need to do now is put the actual link in. Now, I made a little bit of a mistake when we set up the flexible content because we're going to be using a URL. You don't set that to a text field, you set it to a URL field. So if I've created any confusion here, my apologies. So what we're going to do is dynamic tags, scroll right the way down until we get to Dynamics URL. Choose that, and then we're going to just choose the option for button URL. And while nothing shows up at the moment, it is going to work. So all we can do then is if we want to set up any parameters for this, like link options, say this is going to open in a new window, you could do that. It's entirely up to you how you want to handle these buttons and so on. Okay, so that's the basics of that being done. Let's just apply a little bit of style into this. We'll set the text color to be white, just to make sure that stands out. And we're going to set the background color on this. So we're going to set it to a a kind of grayish kind of color, something like, like that. That'll do. Okay, so there's our button. Everything is set up inside there. Next thing we need to do is make sure that only displays if there's a button text being inserted. So how do we deal with that? Really easy. We're going to use our little free plugin for dynamic conditions. So all we need to do is come to advanced when we've got the button selected and we have a new section inside here called dynamic conditions. We're going to expand that out. And we're going to set that up now to display only when it needs to. So how do we do that? Really easy. We're going to click on the little option by here, and you can see that will take us to media files, which is kind of confusing. However, if you mouse over this, you can see we've got the dynamic tags. Select that and then scroll right the way down until you find the Dynamance options. And inside there, we're going to specify that we want to use the Dynamance URL. We'll select that. Link that up to the relevant field like we've done before, the button URL in this example. We only got one, but you may have multiple. And then you've got the option to either show or hide. We're going to set this to hide when condition is met. And the condition is going to be is empty. So we're going to say if the button URL or if the Dynamics URL is empty, hide the button. Otherwise, show the button. It's as simple as that. There's nothing complex about this whatsoever. It's really simple and straightforward. But once you kind of start to link these different things together, you can create really comprehensive, powerful setups using some really simple conditional logic. Okay, so that's our right-hand section basically set out. Now, the left-hand section, we need to set this up because we want to have the image that we've got set as a featured image inside here. So we're going to select the entire column. 
Once we've done that, we're going to come to our style section and we're going to set our background type inside here. So we're going to select background type, come over where we can choose our image and click on the dynamic tags option. And we're going to scroll down until we find that Dynamense image. Select that, click on our wrench icon and set the featured image in our content block to be the image we want to use. Now we can configure this. We can say we're going to set the position to center center. These are kind of just like your safe defaults, but up to you if you want to change these. No repeat and cover. Okay, so we've now basically created this template for this particular custom block, referencing the various different elements. So now let's just save our template or update it if you've saved it previously, and that's the template for our flexible block created. Now, like I say, you can get way more creative than this. This is a really simplistic example, but you can go as far as you want with this and get super creative with your templates, the content you can place inside there, all those kinds of good things. So that's the four templates created for our four flexible content fields, some simple ones and something more comprehensive. So now we've done those, the next thing we need to do is get these into our template for our single post. To do that, we're going to come over into our theme builder option. And inside there, we're going to create a new single post template. We're going to say add new single post, and we're just going to call this default single post. And I'm just going to put Rexy after it, just so we know that I'm using that plugin with this. So we can create our template. And for ease, I'm just simply going to pull in a template that's already been created inside Elementor itself. Because that side of things I've covered again, like I say, in many, many different cases. So you should be more than comfortable working with that side of things yourselves. Okay, so let's just find something. This one looks okay. We'll just insert that. Doesn't really matter too much. Yep, we'll choose that option. Let that download all the relevant files. And there's our design set up. Okay, so let's scroll down. And let's just find the widget we want, which is flexible. And there we go. ACF flexible content. This is a Dynamance Rexy widget. So all we're going to do is add this in. So we're going to drag this above the like, like this article. And there we go. So that's pretty cool. That's easy, super simple to do. All we need to do now is say flexible content name and you can expand that out. And you can see there's our flexible content, which is our ACF meta field, flexible content, choose that option. And that now inserts it into the page, but nothing's happened because we need to tell it what templates, the ones we just created to reference for the content that can appear on this particular section. To do that, we use the layouts list. So you may find you create an abundance of different layouts, but they're not relevant on every single template that you create like this. So you can just pick and choose the ones that are relevant to this particular template. For this example, they're all relevant. So let me just show you how they work. We'll add an item choose the layout name and you can see there's our four templates we've just created. And it doesn't matter what order you put these in because this is just dropping the relevant templates into this theme file. And then when you reorder them and create them in the front end or the back end, that's which dictate, dictates what will be displayed where. So first of all, let's go for gallery title. And you can see we now just have to choose the template and associate it with. So there's our gallery title. And we're going to do the same thing again. So layout, this is going to be gallery description. Choose the template, gallery description. You can kind of see where I'm coming from with this kind of gallery and Facebook content gallery. And finally, we've got a more comprehensive one, which is our content block. And there's our custom block. So now we've inserted the, the relevant widget and we've told it what templates to use. We can just hit publish and we can set our condition upon you like normal. So we'll leave this for all singular. Obviously, you might want to change that. And we say save and close. And that's all our templates for the actual site itself, all created. Okay, so let's create or edit a post that already exists and see this all working. So this is the hello world you normally have as part of installing WordPress. You can see we've just got the title and the content. We've got no featured image and none of our flexible content. So let's rectify that. Let's set a featured image first of all and just choose an image that I want to use. And let's come down to add in a custom block. So let's just say add a custom block, we're going to give this a title, and we're just going to give this a name, and we're just going to call this sample gallery title. It doesn't really matter too much. We'll add another custom block, and this is going to be our gallery description. And we'll just drop in this is the description. And there we go. So there's our description. We'll just full stop that, and we'll add another custom block in, and this is going to be our gallery this time. So I've already uploaded some images. When I say add to gallery, Let's just select our images. We're going to grab these five and we'll select those. That's now inserted inside there. So all that side of things is really easy. Let's add a custom block in though. Let's add in our new content block. And this has more options inside there. So this time we're just going to call this custom block. We'll add in some more filler text. 
just paste that inside there. That's looking good. We'll add our featured image. This time we'll choose something completely different. Let's just upload something new. There we go. We'll upload that image and we'll select that from there. So there's our image and our button text. If we leave this blank, no button will show. So for now, we'll leave that as it is and we'll just update this post. Okay, so that's now been updated. So let's check this out. Let's just take a look and uh, let's just open this up a new tab and you can see there's our post. If we scroll down, there's our sample gallery title, our description, our image gallery, which you can open up. And as you can see, there's our custom design block. So everything is all laid out the way we'd expect. And if you want to make changes to this, you can easily do that. So let's come back in, for example, into our post. Let's add in my website, for example, and then we'll just drop in a link underneath and we'll just update this. And we'll just hop back over, refresh this page, and we should find we now have our button with our text and a link through to the, another page. So really, really easy to do. And just to confirm that you can drag and reorder these things around, let's just shrink this up a little bit. And we're just going to say we want this content block to be at the top. Let's just shrink all of these up, drag that up to the top, update, hop back over and refresh our page. And there's our custom block at the top and our gallery and everything underneath it. So you can reorder these in any way that you want to. So really easy to do that kind of thing. You can get really creative. And if you only want to see how to do this, you don't want to see how to do the front end dashboard side of things, you can hop off the tutorial right now. But if you are interested in finding out how you can link all of this up to create a front end dashboard for your users and still have access to all of these kind of cool flexible box widgets, stick with me. Now we've ticked off most of the groundwork and we're ready to take a look at building the front end dashboard for our users to manage their own content along with these all new flexible content fields. Let's take a look at setting up some of the things we can do inside ACF front end forms pro just to streamline the front end side of things. So we come over into the settings option inside there. We can come over first of all to the uploads privacy. You can filter this media by author. So if you have multiple authors and you don't want them to be able to share and see each other's files, you can check this option, which is really useful. Obviously, if it's just you working on things, you don't need to worry about this. Next thing you can take a look at is the hide WP dashboard, which is pretty useful. What you can do inside here is you can hide the, the actual physical WP dashboard, WordPress dashboard based upon various different things. So if a user role is user, there'll be a checkbox in each user's profile page to show hide the WP dashboard. So you can set that up and you can set up where you want to redirect things to. So I would generally recommend you redirect that to the account that we're going to create right now. And that'll have a login if someone tries to access it. And if they can't access it, they can't get into that section. And therefore, they'll just get the login and repeat that side of things. I'm not going to worry about doing that. Like I say, I've already covered most of these kinds of things in their own dedicated tutorials. I don't want to bore you and make this longer than it needs to be. Okay, so with that being done, first thing we need to do is create the loop that's going to hold the various different articles that we've created already. To do that, we're going to come into our theme builder inside Elemental, hop into our loop section, and we're going to add a new loop. And we're just going to call this front end articles. There we go. We'll create our template. And once we've done that, we can just use Elemental now to build out what we need. So we're going to close this down and we're going to create something really, really simple. This is just there to list the items. So we're going to select a single row column. From there, we're now going to set that up. So we're going to put the content we want in. So let's start off by adding the various different elements. First things first, we're going to add in our featured image. We'll drop that at the top. And next up, we're going to just come in and we're going to add in a title. Now we're going to use this. We're going to say the post title and we're just going to position that underneath if it'll go in there. Let's try that again. There we go. Post title. And then we're going to come in and we're going to add in a text area. Drop that inside there. Now we're going to set this up because one of the things we get when we install Elemental Custom Skin is an extra little widget that we have inside our dynamic tags. Expand that out. We're going to just use post summary. This is then going to show us X number of words from our actual post itself. We now need the option to be able to edit this post. This is going to be the listing that allows us to choose to edit any individual post. To do that, we're going to use one of ACF Front End Form Pro's features. So if we come back to our widgets and we're just going to search for edit and we'll see we've got the option for edit button along with a lot of other options as well. But we just want the edit button. So let's just drag and drop that underneath. And there's our edit post option. We just need to make sure that everything is going to work correctly. So the URL key is post underscore ID. 
that's perfectly fine. And if you want to configure this to make it look any way you want, you can do that right now. And I'm going to quickly just apply some styling to this. It's not kind of key to this particular tutorial. I'm just going to do it so it all looks a little bit nicer. Okay, so there's our loop item setup. One final thing I want to do is I'm going to select the button at the bottom and we're going to come into our content section and we're going to scroll down to permissions. And this is where we can add just an extra little bit of control over who can access these different things. So we can select the select by user. And if you want to, you can select the different roles. Now I'm an administrator, but you may want to allow editors and authors and so on. You can choose those from there. Anybody that falls outside that won't see this button. So I'm going to leave that set to administrator for this example. And other than that, we're going to hit publish. We're not going to worry about setting any conditions and we're just going to hit save and close. And that's the first part of this done. We've now created our loop item with our edit post option. Next up on our list is to add this loop into our dashboard homepage. This is our custom front end dashboard. So I'm going to exit my dashboard. I'm going to come to my pages. I've already gone ahead and created a blank dashboard page with just some simple navigation on the left hand side that I could link up later on. So this is what we're working with. Like I say, not important how you do this. What we want to do now, though, is drop in the post loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our widgets and we're going to grab the posts option and drop that into the right hand main section. And you can see there's our post. Now, what this is doing currently is it's pulling in any post. Doesn't matter who or anything else. It's not using the design we've created. So to rectify that, first thing we're going to do is choose the skin option and choose custom. And this is part of Elementor custom skin. Once you do that, we can now choose what template we want to use. And we've only got one which is our front end post loop. And you can see that's now set the design up inside there. You can set some other options inside you. And if you've got the pro version, you have a lot more features available to you. We're going to be using the free version. So we'll leave that as it is. We'll set this up to be two columns. And what we need to do now is go ahead and set up the query and things to control who can see these actual posts. Now at the moment, this is going to show every post by every single person. And that might be fine for administrators, but if you want to sort of limit this to only show the ones by the author that logs in, which is what you should do for editors and authors and so on, we need to rectify that. So open up the query option. We're going to be using the source of posts unless you're using something like a custom post type, at which point you could change whatever you want inside there. Posts in this example is perfectly fine. Included by, we can leave all these options as they are. The only thing we're interested in is this advanced query option towards the bottom. And this is where we have added the advanced query options plugin, which is the free plugin that gives us more control. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the plus and you can see we've got five different options at this point in time. What we want to choose is dynamic user and that will open up another set of options. And this is the dynamic user options. We can expand that and we're going to say the post author is the current user. So in other words, when we're logged in into our dashboard, we will be the current logged in user user. And this is only going to show the posts associated with me when I'm logged in. So that's it. That's what we need to do. We can update that. And as new posts now are added, we'll be listed inside here and we can then edit them. So the next thing we need to do is create the page that's going to be used for editing our posts. Now to make our life easy, let's just copy this entire section. So we're just going to select this, copy it, and then we're going to create a new page. So we're going to exit to our dashboard and add a new page in, and we'll use that as the basis. So we're going to add a new page, and this is going to be called Edit. And we'll just publish this, and we'll edit it with Elementor. Now, obviously, like I say, you would apply some kind of security onto these pages so only logged in users can access them with the right privileges. And like I say, I've covered that in previous videos, so check those out if you need to find out more. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to set this page layout to be using the Elementor Canvas because I don't want any of the distractions as part of the normal layout. We're going to right click, we're going to paste that inside there, and we're just going to delete this from here. Now, you might be wondering where's the blue and everything gone for the background? Well, that's because we set that up inside the settings into style. And inside there, we've got a custom style set up for our pages. Let me just show you how this is done because this is quite a cool technique. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into style. This is going to affect the entire page. So we're going to set our background as a gradient. We're going to choose our first color, which is going to be this dark blue color. We're going to set our second color, which is going to be white. And actually, tell the light, it's not going to be white. It's going to be a pale blue kind of color. So let's just drop that inside there. So we'll drop that color in there and we'll save that as a global color, create that. And now we just need to tweak the actual gradient on here. So we're going to set the location to be 20. We're going to set this location then to be zero. You see that now gives us a nice hard edge line. And then we're going to set this to be 90 degrees. And there's our left hand section. So quite easy to do and a nifty little trick if you've never done it this way before. Okay, so next thing we're going to change this to 
from my posts to edit post and that's our page basically created. Let's update this before we start working on the next stage, which is adding in the edit post option because this is a little bit more involved. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over and we're gonna select the option to insert the edit post widget. So to do that, I'm gonna come over to the left-hand side and we're just gonna search for edit. And you can see there's all our edit options and what we want for this example is post edit form. So there's our post edit form. Let's drop that into our design and that now pre-fills out what it thinks is correct. Now there's a couple of things we need to do before we go any further. You can see this is pulling in sort of pre-filled information which isn't necessarily what we want. So the first and probably the most important thing we need to do right now is tell it how to know what post to edit. Because if you remember, this is going to be linked from that loop we just created and that's the edit button. So we need to pass over the URL and tell it how to filter. To do that, we're going to come down into the left hand section and from there, we're going to scroll down until we get the option of post. And inside there, we've got a couple of things we can do. So the first thing it says select post and it says current post. That's not what we want. We want to change that to URL query. And once we do that, you can see it says post underscore ID. So this is pre-filled out. And unless you've changed it when we created the edit button, that's going to be exactly what you want. So you can leave that as it is. It's just a URL query and post ID. That's all we need. The post status is when we edit this post, what status do we want to have applied to it? Now, if you were the only person that's accessing this front end dashboard, you could set this to go straight to published if you wanted to. However, if you're letting other people access this content and add content and make changes, I would recommend you either put this into draft status or pending review. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to put it into pending review. This means that when someone updates one of their existing posts and they save it, that will go back into pending review and will not be available on the front end of the site. And this just means you remove the potential for people to abuse this feature by putting in something that gets approved first of all and then they make changes with things you might not want them to put on there. Hope that makes sense. With that being done, we've now configured the basic parts of things. It's still showing this junk inside you because what it does is it's just pulling in the page content and injecting that into this section. Okay, before we move on now to setting up the custom fields we want to use, let's just do one more thing. We're going to come into the permissions option and again, we're going to make sure everything is configured inside here. So only logged in users, you can apply a custom message and so on inside here if you want to. So only logged in users, set the levels or the roles you want to allow access. And if you have specific users, you can use those inside here as well. However, I'm just going to set this to be set to administrators that are logged in. You can use dynamic permissions if you want to. And again, there's lots of options inside here, but we're going to keep this simple. I've covered most of these in other tutorials. Let's hop into our form field section and take a look at what's going on inside there. So we have the normal things you have as part of a WordPress post, title, content, featured image, and categories, all of which we want to use. What we also want to do though is add in those custom fields. So if we take a look at our form at the moment, there's our title, our content, our featured image, and our categories. Let's add in a new field. We're gonna expand this out, and you can see we have the option for ACF fields which is perfectly fine. And you've got more options inside this. So you've got tons of different kinds of fields you can include into this. However, all we need is the ACF fields. And then we're gonna click on the plus and we're gonna choose the option. And there's only one at this point, which is our flexible content. We'll choose that. And that now gives us our flexi content section inside our form. So all we need to do now is apply some simple styling to this to make it look a little nicer. And then we can take a look at testing this out to make sure that everything is working the way it should do. Okay, there we go. There's a little bit of styling added to this. So let's just update our page and let's test this out just to make sure that everything is working as needed. Okay, so here's our front end dashboard. There's the post that we have. We're going to click to edit this. And you can see this now opens up, fills out all the relevant details. There's our featured image, any categories, and all of our custom flexible fields are inserted in here as well. So all the information we need is set up in here for us. So we're on the home straight now. We've covered lots of what we wanted to do. The next thing to do is to add a new post. This works in a very similar fashion to the edit post, but let me take you through how you do that. We're going to add in a new page. We're just going to call this add new post and we'll publish this and then we'll edit it with Elementor. Once that's done, we're going to simply paste in what we did before. So first of all, let's just set this to be the Elementor canvas. So we get rid of any of the other stuff that's on there and we'll just right click and paste. And there we go. Everything is inserted in there. We'll just close this down now to get rid of this, delete that from there and we'll change this to new post. 
There we go. And I'll quickly just apply that page styling like we did before so we get our left hand blue navigation block. So I'll just pause the video and do that quickly. There we go. There's our custom dashboard ready. So the next thing we're going to do is come into our widgets and we're going to do a search for new post. So let's just do a search for new post and there's our new post widget. Drag that into our setup. There we go. There's our new post. And this works again in a very similar fashion. Obviously, we don't need to pass any values over this time. But we do need to go ahead and add in that extra field, which is for our ACF, ACF field. We'll take off the post title because we don't need that. We're just duplicating. We'll add in our new field. ACF fields is fine. And we'll say that's flexi content. And you can see there's our flexi content block added into there. As we did before, let's quickly set our permissions on here as well. So I'm going to say logged in users, admin, and we're not going to worry about the selecting a user on there. Okay, so with that being done, we can jump in now to our actions. We set our form fields, we set our permissions. Let's just choose what happens. So the submit action, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to say, we're going to leave that as it is, but you could send an email out if you wanted to. So we can say once that's submitted, an email will be sent out to the admin to let them know that there's new content being added, at which point they can then choose what to do with that side of things. So that's pretty easy to do. And then you can choose what happens, like the redirect. Do you want to stay on this page? Do you want to go to a certain page? I tend to sort of like say, if you're doing a new post, to stay on the page because it's quite useful. And then what you can do is you can say you want to allow them to edit the form. You know, there's a lot of different things you can do inside you. So set this up how you want to. And again, I've covered this in a lot more detail. This on dedicated tutorials. If we go to post section, we can choose what happens with the post status and those kinds of things. So set the post status to pending review because this is a new post and we want it to be approved first. Select the post, current post. Well, that's perfectly fine. We're going to leave that as the current post and then say new post type. You can change this if you're using custom post types, but we're using a normal WordPress post. So we'll leave that as post as well. And we're going to leave this as it is. You've got some nice things inside you, like safe progress options and really useful things. But like I say, we're keeping this simple. You want to expand. All those things have been covered in a lot more detail. Okay, so let's update this page. And then I'm going to quickly apply some styling to this to make sure everything looks the way we want it to. So there's all our styling being added to our new form. I've linked these up as well inside here, and I'll do the same on the other template files or the other files we've used to create the dashboard so we can use those and we can take a look at what this all works like now on the front end of our site in our new custom dashboard. Okay, so let's just test this out now. So we're back onto our dashboard. We've seen how to edit things. Let's just say we want to add a new post. So we can say add new post. There's our new form. We're just going to call this new post. We'll drop in some content. It doesn't really matter what's going in there. We'll add a featured image. We'll choose this one and select that. And then we can come down. We'll set this to be uncategorized and we'll just add in, let's just say we'll add a gallery block. It doesn't really matter. All the options are pretty good to go. Add our gallery. We'll choose a couple of images from there and hit select. And then we'll do is we'll submit that. Now, depending upon how you set this up, whether it's set to come back here, go back to your dashboard, we get this notification to say that post has been added successfully. And if we hop over into the dashboard, the normal WordPress dashboard, we should see that post is waiting to be approved. And there we go into our post section. There's our new post pending. So what we can do is we can quick edit that and we can approve that. So we say that's published and hit update on there. Come back into our dashboard and go back to our home. And there's our second post. So we can edit that if we want to. And all of those things are in there ready for us to edit. Our gallery, everything else, all set up. This really is only the tip of a much bigger iceberg. And once you see what can be achieved with these tools, you should be able to let your imagination run wild and start creating all sorts of amazing designs and providing your clients with a much more feature-rich experience while keeping them out of the dashboard. Now, as always, all of the applicable links are in the description below. And if you've made it this far in the video, well, why not give that thumbs up button a click? It really does help me out. While you're at it, if you enjoyed the content, well, also kick that subscribe button and slap the bell icon. However, if you didn't get value from the video, feel free to hit the thumbs down button twice, as that works pretty well too. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.